Hello, this is Daniel Ritchie, the developer of Howler, and today I would like to talk to you about some of the new features that have been added in the latest version, which is 9.5. Uh, before I start this, I would like to talk to those who are new to the po program uh, and just explain a few of our basic concepts and some of the fundamentals of using the program. Uh, let me start with uh, the basic idea is that we are a natural media paint program with a focus on the visual effects industry um, and uh, tools that can be used in animation or media such as video and other types of uh, motion graphics and uh, we are also as I said a natural media painter uh, when you open the program for the first time you can look across the, the bar which we call the context strip and you'll see a button that says browse media simply click on this and you'll get a list of the available media that is our basic drawing tools uh, where you'll find things like uh, gouache and watercolors and oil paints but you'll also find some unique tools such as particle painting uh, we have brushes uh, that are based on bristles which are uh, simulated um, by calculating every single bristle in a paintbrush and we have what we call custom brushes which is a uh, an older idea from the Amiga personal computer that was very popular um, in the uh, earlier developmental stages of computer graphics and uh, we, we thought that was a good idea to carry that through uh, the idea behind a custom brush is that you can pick up an image on screen and it becomes a new drawing tool simply by using a brush selector tool and picking it up and as you see it becomes a new drawing tool and there's a lot you can do with that um basically howler is really based around this idea of custom brushes more so than some of the other programs out there uh which seem to be more layer based um not that we have anything against layers but it just we didn't feel it was part of our mission to be just like the others um we thought it would be kind of fruitless and pointless to try to duplicate uh, what other programs have done at best we could be just like them um, and uh, that's really all we could uh, strive for if we had gone that direction um, but we felt it was our mission to try to innovate and explore new ways of doing things i'm starting to sound like a star trek episode but uh, i think you get the idea um, as i said we have all these built-in drawing tools we have things such as the typical things smearing and and working with the uh, blurring and and all these things and painting on the alpha channel and you know pastel tools and cloning and all those sort of things we also have as i said some unique tools particles um as you can see here we've drawn some uh, some trees and things using our uh, a fairly advanced uh, tree drawing or foliage drawing tool. We also have some some simpler uh, fractal light drawing tools as you see there. Uh, both can be used within the program very easy just by clicking on the particles drop down you have full control over all the settings. Uh, you can load and save your presets and that sort of thing. Um, the particle tool can also be used not just as a drawing tool but also as a uh, animation tool. Uh, we are very much centered around the idea of being able to animate, not just to draw something, but to be able to animate something. Um, we have many tools that are used in the VFX industry or in the animation industry, such as a timeline, a, uh, a brush keyframer, an exposure sheet for uh, helping with uh, traditional animation tasks. Uh, you can load and save uh, AVI, AVI files and uh, frame sequences in a number of different formats and a lot of other tools that are useful for creating animation. Um, we also have a number of fun tools. Uh, as I said, uh, painting on foliage. Uh, as you see here is our foliage tool. Just simply loading up a, um, a preset will let you create a very realistic or very stylistic tree. Or it could be a bush or a grass or something to that effect, a cactus perhaps or maybe a full-grown uh, oak tree or something that of that effect um, but there's 
a lot that can be done with this tool. Um, that will be for your explanation, exploration uh, as you uh, try out the program. We have a demo that you can try, try out. It's uh, 30 saves that you can have. Um, I'd like to explain a few more things before I go on to the new features of 9.5. Uh, about the interface, um, we, as we said, uh, we're very much brush-based, but there are also a lot of the other drawing tools, flood fills, uh, lines, and, and gradients, and all that sort of thing. We also have uh, a few different differentiations between us and other prog programs, uh, such as a shortcut. Um, when uh, in normal programs, you would uh, normal well, in other programs, you would uh, have a hand tool where you'd click on it. You go over here, move things around, then you have to go back and click on the other tool you're working on. Well, in, in Howler, it's more of a shortcut. You just move the mouse over there, click on it, dr start dragging, and when you let go, you're back to the tool you were uh, on before. So it uh, sort of saves two steps. Um, it's one thing that kind of throws people off when they first use the program because they're not expecting it. But uh, I think it's we passed it along around the beta team, and they thought it was perfectly fine, and there was no re reason to change it. They thought it was a good shortcut. So it stayed in, and um, we do believe it helps with productivity. We also have a keyboard shortcut, which will do the same thing, which is Control and Shift. Uh, by pressing those, you can simply uh, drag around in uh, on the main screen. You can also use the right mouse button to zoom in and out. And that, uh, that uh, process of using the left and mouse button uh, is something that's used throughout the program, such as painting. You can paint with the, uh, I mean, select the drawing tool. An airbrush will do. You can paint with uh, the right mouse button, and then you can erase with the left mouse button. So it's sort of another shortcut. Um, we're not really layer, layersy, layersy based so much as the others. So, really, the idea here is erase of erasing is is erasing to the backdrop color. So, say we had a backdrop color of blue, you could erase to that color, or you could just use it as a second drawing color. So, it's somewhat flexible in that regard as well. All right. So, um, I think I've explained some of our basic ideas and what our focus is. I'm going to go ahead and move on to what's new in version uh, 9.5. And I'll start with the uh, by a few showing a few of the uh, example images that we have here. Uh, let's see, we've got well, we do have some 3D capabilities within the program, which have been growing over the last uh, about four years since version six. Um, this is manifested in uh, a landscape rendering tool, among other things. Uh, with it, you can create these these fanciful landscapes. They can be somewhat realistic at times. We have things like ray trace shadows and ambient occlusion and all these other things that you would see in a, a typical 3D program. Uh, and as you can see, you can get pretty decent results from it. Um, we also have a cloud system, which is new in 9.5 and uh, so on. I'll uh, show you a few other examples. Let's see. Uh, we also have the ability to create uh, terrain uh, texturing or coloring based on attributes such as slope, altitude, and sediment. Um, sediment is this uh, all the things that settle uh, after an after a uh, an erosion process has taken place. All the uh, the particles that have settled in these valleys can be then colored, and uh, such as this snow that you see here is a uh, snow being uh, settling into these these pits and these valleys of this uh, landscape and that's something new that's in 9.5 also new is a uh, parameter for our uh, particle uh, what we call orbicles which is a, a rotating sort of dynamic uh, web brush uh, it's sort of an effect that's become popular over the last year or two or maybe three even at this point uh, but we've added a, uh, a, a spring parameter to this, which makes it more bouncy and, and smoke-looking. And that's something that is new, which can be accessed from our, uh, what we call orbicles, which is also on the particle tool, uh, under the orbicle tab. And I'll just try to duplicate that right there for you briefly. Let's see. Uh, there's basic, uh, 
without any really dynamics happening. Then you get this delta scale. It starts getting more interesting. But then you add this spring value, and it really starts to take on a more interesting... Uh, and sometimes it can really get kind of crazy, but as you see, it starts to take on a more interesting look to it. Changing the uh, some of the shading parameters and things also can have a, a big difference there. Uh, altering the number of bristles, for example. Let's see. So that is just one of the new features. Um, as I said, we have some new features in the 3D Designer. I'll just start with some plasma noise, which is very easy to work with. Transform 3D Designer. As you see here, it looks somewhat similar uh, to what it looked like before. But we have a uh, what, we, what we call a more tab. It just gives you some more options. Uh, like I said, there's a cloud system, uh, the ability to add erosion sediments, uh, and the ability to create a texture uh, just simply by dragging these sliders. You can control the amount of uh, snow and grass, and uh, also change the the way that sediment is shaded within the program. Let's say we had some sediment in there. Can now have that sediment color also shaded as uh, either the snow or the grass or the rock, for example. And uh, we also have the ability to store um, some of these buffers that are being used, or some of these internal uh, images that are used within the in within the 3D designer, uh, such as lighting and the erosion mask. Let's see, which is not currently being used. I'll turn that on just to show it store the erosion you can store a depth map and the uh, 3d tech the um, the texture that's being used which is this uh, green and gray and white uh, texture is being used and also you can save an obj file which is uh, an interchange format for 3d programs so those are just some of the new tools to 3d designer um, we've also added a, a new tool to our animation feature called the uh, onion skin or uh, more specifically the light table so I'll just create a simple animation maybe 30 frames um, we have full animation support within the program uh, and light table which I'll turn on now is a feature let me get rid of this particle thing I was working with okay that'll work let's see Light table is a feature that animators use to see their uh, their drawings as they work on them. I'll just number these frames just to show that you can now see through uh, to the previous frames or to the uh, future frames as well. As you, as you see, I drag forward and backward backwards. Uh, this is a feature that was already in here, but we've expanded it to uh, allow more layers. And there's also a new feature. We go to um, animation, light table settings. Uh, you can now blend the uh, the intensities or change the intensities of these layers or the opacity of these layers. But you can also use this feature we call redshift, which tints the uh, the layers so that they appear um, in different colors depending on uh, if they're future or pre uh, past frames. The past frames get sort of a, uh, a red color, and the future frames get sort of a bluish tint to them. Uh, and that's what we call redshift within the program. Um, so those are just a few of the new things coming to Haller. Uh, hope I've whet your appetite for what the program can do. And I uh, would like to talk to you more in the future, of course. But uh, I'll probably hand things over to Philip. He's very good at uh, talking about what's new and... Uh, really coming up with some wild and imaginative uh, ways of using the program. Uh, Got to give him credit on that one. And uh, he's on the PD Howler channel on YouTube. And uh, you can see his videos there. Hope you've enjoyed the, the demonstration uh, and <laughs> listening to me ramble briefly about the features of Howler 9.5. Thanks for watching and uh, talk to you later.